Welcome back to another video guys. Today it's a special edition. I'm in front of the camera <laughs> because uh, my guest does not want to appear on camera so it's fine. I'll do... I'll, I'll take the shot man. Um, so today we have Aaron here who has this uh, S-Works SL7. Beautiful bike. So before we begin maybe... You want me to introduce the bike? <laughs> so I'll take a shot at introducing the bike. Uh, this is my first time looking at the bike. So SL7 in a size 54 and you are 177 centimeters. Uh, this is the Aerofly carbon, uh, I mean they're all carbon, the Aerofly um, handlebar which you think it's a, or I think it's a 40, but you think it's a 42? I think it's 42. 42, okay. And uh, pretty long stem, this does not look standard. Uh, I think this is a, my initial guess earlier was 100, but you think, I think you told me it was a 110. 110. 110. And S-Works power mirror saddle, Dura Ace, full Dura Ace group set. And a uh, very lovely Princeton Carbon Works Wix 6560 with Turbo Cotton. Turbo Cotton. Wow, thanks for guiding me, man. I think I screwed everything up. <laughs> um, very nice bike. Um, SL7, we were talking about the fork recall. Um, can you just tell us about the decision of buying this bike? And also probably perhaps, have you got the, the fork compression plug uh, replaced? Uh, the only reason I got the bike was because of the color scheme. So m most of my bikes are all black so i wanted to get a full black uh sl7 but i couldn't find one in singapore at that point in time and it was so difficult to get my hands on one so this one was actually imported from overseas so a good friend actually helped to do it uh yeah eventually managed to get one but initially i thought it was a matte black paint scheme the colorway but when you look at it up close you can actually see the exposed carbon and it's in a very uh, I don't know it looks like it, it, to me it looks weird lah, but over time it grows on you it actually looks like water stain but uh, when later when you zoom in closely you can actually take you can actually see it lah. and uh, it actually fades to uh, not fade it actually directly cuts the lower portion is actually a little bit silverish if you go closer you can actually see yeah and the fork I haven't got the time to go to specialize to get it fixed though but uh, uh my, a friend of mine actually did it already so he said that it was a one day job so I, I i think i better go into it soon okay so maybe let's talk about the uh, price man everyone will be interested to know the price did you get this from a local singapore distributor or because this is a, diff a, a bit different setup right you get the carbon wick or i'm assuming you probably bought part by part it was actually custom built though so yeah like i said the a friend of mine actually brought it in so if why? Wow, because the parts are all bought separately. You know, during, during that period of time, everybody, it's so difficult to get uh, bike parts. So the price was, if I'm not wrong, I think if you add everything together, it was almost, it's 19-ish, uh, really a bit shy of 20. Yeah, and that was not even including the, oh no, it was including the, the mirror saddle. So yeah, everything all in is, is slightly shy of 20. Why did you decide on a SL7? You were telling me you, you rode Italian bikes, now you are going for the SL7. I have a very controversial take about the SL7. I, I don't like it because, um, it, it, I mean, their whole purpose of the SL7 is uh, one bike to roll them all. It's meant for an aero bike, a climbing bike, but... It just looks weird because it's neither here nor there. But then again, most bike companies, they are, you know, coming out with bikes that are uh, a one bike fits all terrain. And I don't like it. I like, you know, you are either an aero bike or a climbing bike, but I'm very traditional in that sense. La. Ironically, I share the same view as you. <laughs> I'm one person that, you know, if it's A means it's for A, B is meant for A. If you come and do an A 1.5, it's just neither here nor there. I, I also don't like it. I got this bike, was it was actually on impulse because on a normal, on a casual night ride, I actually swapped bike with a friend of mine. So he, he's actually riding a SL7 as well. And I was, uh, my, my previous bike was actually a Dogma F12. So when I tried his bike, the first thing that came to my mind was that it is so comfortable. Uh, and he wasn't even on the power saddle, the, 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 the set, the, that, that seat. And I still felt that it was way more comfortable than the F12. So for me, I'm a little bit on the bigger side. So comfort is my priority so i i'm one person that i prefer to go long distance a longer distance as compared to going fast la. so that was why i decided to change uh yeah but if you ask me uh i still i would still think that if you want to go arrow go for the arrow version if you want to go for a climbing bike go for the climbing version so yeah this is a uh, uh, in between but it's still fast la. i i mean i i come from the f12 so i i can I can say that it's 
still fast. It still does. His, it still gets the job done. So F12 and the SL7, uh, you mentioned it's fast. It gets the job done. Uh, given the chance to go back in time, would you still buy the SL7? I mean, having ridden it. Having ridden it. Uh, okay, let's just say my, my, my priority is still comfort, right? Then yes, I, I will still get the bike as well. But uh, if you just simply compare color, I will still get the bike as well. But if let's just say one day I decided that, hey, uh, maybe I really just want to go full arrow, then yeah, I will go back to the F12. But I believe the F12's frame is uh, pretty heavy. It's heavier compared to the uh, SL7. Um, Speaking of weight, what is the weight of the bike? I have never weighed it though, to be honest. I've not weighed it though, but uh, I, the, when, I, I mean, I, I look at other videos with pretty similar setup. It is, I think, around 7-ish, if I'm not wrong. Okay. Yeah, okay. so I, I personally have not weighed the bike because to me, I just want to go out and ride and don't really care about all the numbers per se. If you can see, I, I do have a computer mount, but I'm one person that don't believe in. I, I not say don't believe. I'm one person that don't have a computer because I don't want to be bogged down by the numbers. I just want to every ride. I just go out and uh, I just pedal it to the max. Huh? Until I can, don't really have breath, really, I'll stop. Yeah. <laughs> okay. kind. Why the Princeton Carbon Wake Six Five Six Zero? This one is just pure aesthetics. Ah, uh. <laughs> there's no other wheels that looks as nice as these wheels. But functionality, I'm not a good judge. Uh, prior to that, I was actually on the Rovell Rapids. So, I mean, if, I mean, in Singapore, we are pretty fortunate we don't have those kind of crosswinds per se. So, I mean, to be honest, I don't think you can feel much of a difference. But if you have, if you're an aesthetic person, then this is probably the nicer one you can go for. I would agree that uh, the wheels are one of a kind because of uh, the... And it has to be white decal. It has to be white. Why? Why? Because this 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 particular uh, uh this particular model it comes in uh if i'm not wrong there is a silver version there is a gold version there is a i think there is a black on black version and the white the others just don't look as striking in your face as this this is a must like if, if you have a full black on if you are those kind of person that that needs to sh show something uh, then yeah I, I'm one person that this shows everything the wheels it's just purely aesthetic if you ask me well I guess it pairs really well with the bike because uh, you have white decals on the bike so I mean any other colour would just destroy the look of it ah okay a very, very controversial take on this uh S-Works Power because it is the latest rage right now in Singapore everyone wants this power mirror 3D printer whatever bullshit right but I think it's just way overpriced. It is 600, if I last, last checked on uh, Specialized Singapore's website, uh, it's 650 Singapore dollars, which is an insane amount of money for a saddle. Provided you can get it. From Provided you can get it, yes. And uh, I think a couple of months ago or weeks ago when I was just browsing around, right, I think someone told me on the uh, second-hand market in Carousel, these saddles are going at a premium than the, you know, the original price, which why man <laughs> what, what is your take on i mean is it really that good if i'm not wrong the saddle cost me 800 dollars as well so there is no way you can get it from specialized website uh. you probably have to try your luck to see if there's stock but i don't think you'll be able to get it from the website so if you really want to get it you really have to get it through carousel or those kind of uh second second hand selling away but i can i can personally vouch every dollar is worth it <laughs> Because I go for long rides and the comfort is you can't compare. Eh? No no other saddles. I mean I, I don't I've not tried a lot of saddles but uh I've I mean I'm fortunate enough to ride a few different bikes and my friends bike as well, but the comfort nothing come close. Eh? You it's very difficult to explain. But if you're one person that, that gets like shavings here, there when you go for long rides, right, then you probably want to invest in this. This is probably one of the best investment in the whole bike. Uh, that's what a couple of my friends who have this power mirror, you know, that's what they say. Um, I, I, I'm still very skeptical because I just think the price is ridiculous. Um, for $800, that $800, man, it's only retailing for $650. I mean, like if you ask me if people would spend some money to upgrade the OSPW, I really think if you ask me to compare, I, I would rather not go for OSPW. I would just get a set of any day. If I had to repeat the same purchase, make same decision, I will make the same decision every time. Okay, on, 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 that, on that note, I will agree that OSP, OSPW is one of the most useless things ever. Uh, yes, then yeah, of course, for $800, yeah, get the saddle, right? But um, because it's 
so soft. I mean, I've tried it. Um, I've never tried it on a long ride, but I like my saddle a bit firmer because, you know, when I'm pushing down, I don't want to be like bouncing up and down, right? So, I mean, that's a bit of exaggeration that you bounce up like a sofa. Lah. But, um, okay, we'll move on because I think that will be a never-ending discussion. Okay, the setup of your bike, uh, the stem is not dropped all the way because you mentioned you like it a bit more comfortable. Yeah. Uh, any plans to drop the, the stem? No, I don't plan to drop it. I, I, I still prefer me to be seated in a more upright position as compared to an arrow position. I, I'm not going for personal record or personal best or anything i just like having the the wind in my face so if i can prolong that feeling i would rather go i mean with this sitting position i can easily go another extra hour if i really want to extra two hours never tried before but i think it's not a problem yeah that's true i cannot do that okay uh before we move on to the next segment let's just quickly wrap up uh likes and dislikes about the bike uh i guess if i really have to pick a dislike is the I mean, if you put this beside a uh, 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 Italian bike, for example, okay, let's okay, let's just say for for comparative sake, you you put this beside a uh, Dogma F12, this will just look not, it will just look, I don't know, less aggressive. That's the only dislike that I have about bike lah. But um, but then again, maybe it's not a very fair comparison to 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 compare it to Italians. Italian designs are always there they, they go for the design more than anything but yeah one thing that i really if i can change oh actually i can't change i mean if i were to really pick something and then it would just be the overall look of it like. it, look, it looks too mundane if, if you ask me it looks too normal it's just like any other bike on the road if you remove the the, the decals uh, you probably can't tell that it's as well uh. By the way, if anybody wants to work for me for free to manage my camera, please let me know. I'm running everything by myself. <laughs> Every five minutes, I gotta check whether my camera is running. Okay, we've got a couple of questions that came in from Instagram. So, Instagram Q&A, you guys want to ask your questions, follow me on Instagram and you get a chance to roast my interviewee. Are you ready? Okay. Uh, oh, good question. Do you think the SL7 leads to their motto of one bike to rule them all? as claimed by Specialized? Um, oh, I mean, not coming from any uh, numbers or what. I, I, I mean, just from few, from the, the writings of few different bikes. I would say yes. Eh. It is really fast. I mean, I personally feel that it's really fast enough, um, light enough. Climbing, I don't have problems as well. So I would say it really is... Well, this bike probably can do everything yeah next question is about the fork recall problem uh, you've mentioned you haven't sent it back to Specialized but I want to top up on that question um, since you did not get this from a local Singapore distributor do you think there will be any pushbacks from the local guys saying, telling them telling you that you can't get it done as fast as those guys who bought it from them uh, well, I, I mean I only have a friend that did it but I in all honesty I'm not sure whether he got it from local as well but he got it done in a day so yeah I guess I mean to them the specialized people when I speak to them they are very nice people I don't think they were I don't think uh, it's just I don't think they will really go and say, "Hey, your bike is not bought from us." I, I maybe I do next year or something like that. <laughs> yeah, I don't think so. Any further upgrades you will do to this bike if money is not an issue? If money is not an issue, uh, then I'll probably change the OSPW law for pure aesthetic purposes, lah. Because it <laughs> it's something look big there. It, I mean, I need to admit, uh, it looks nice, lah. But practicality wise, I really don't think it does anything. Uh. At least not for my riding standard. I don't think that saving a few watts will make a lot of difference for my style of riding. Yeah, but if money no issue, why not <laughs> just get one? If money is not issue, I'll customize to make it even make it a goal, a goal, uh, whatever uh, the roto, whatever you call it. Yeah, too bad we don't live in a perfect world where you know if money is not an issue. Is this the end game, or do you still last over another better bike? This one, I. I think if you I mean personally I like cycling so you know me being a anything that comes out new every other year I would be extra interested in it but I mean I'm actually thinking to go back to Ita to the Italians though I, I was uh, just casually browsing through the Dogma S <laughs> Have you ridden an SL6 before? No Okay so I can't ask this question Is the mirror saddle worth it? I, I'm not going to say anything Yes Every dollar is worth it Okay Especially if you're on the uh, the bigger rider, it's way worth it. Somebody asked this question, is the mirror saddle worth it and how much better than the S-Works carbon rail version? 
This is a carbon rail, right? Yes. So, okay, this question is invalid. Why not Rovell wheels? I don't know. When I got this wheels, it's really just purely aesthetics. I, I like the looks of it so much. It's This is, when I, it only took me probably five seconds to decide that I need to get these wheels. <laughs> okay, I think this is the most uh, last relevant question. Are you aware of the squeeze test on the, on the frame? Squeeze test. No? Okay, so there is a, there's this YouTuber guy called Durian Rider. He's an Aussie guy. He claims that the SL7 is a shitty bike okay. um, because it's overpriced and whatnot and the carbon is very soft. Okay. So what he did, which became very viral, was he started using his thumbs and he started pressing on the down tube okay. and he was flexing like crazy in his video. I don't know, we can try it. I can try? Yeah, we can try. I, I mean, I've tried it. Uh, you are a gym guy. Uh, do you want to press it? I don't want to... What if I really press and it breaks, but that's probably not yeah, going to happen. Try. You want to try? Okay, go ahead, man. Try pressing it. My, 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 my follower asked, can I do squeeze test on the frame? Yeah. Okay, wait, let me, let me record with my, my phone. <laughs> this is funny. You gotta use two hands, man. Okay. Yeah? And look at his biceps, ah. Uh. He's a huge guy, man. I'm actually squeezing very hard. <laughs> my fingers are red already, and I cannot even get it to, to move. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I'll, share, I'll share you the video that went, went was very popular among the SL7 guys because they said that he was uh, pressing it and then... Uh, yeah, it's it was. Really very difficult, like, you can get I know. I tried it on my friend's bike. I like. I pressed it like crazy, right? And when this guy was uh, pressing it on his SL7 frame, he, he was like pressing on a bottle of uh, Coke. Where you press, and he was like flexing in like mad. And I, I, when I first saw it, I was like, wow, is it really? Then I went to my friend's bike. I started pressing, and then he got very angry at me <laughs> for pressing his down tube. But I don't know. I, I, I won't go further into that. No, but no, no, I just did it. Uh. It's not possible. Uh. I did not say. It. I won't say possible. I mean, I just did it. I don't think you can do it eh? unless, I don't know, unless he has super big biceps and he has a lot of wrist strength. <laughs> Frank Stoff, by Specialized Australia, does sell Frank Frank. This is genuine legit stuff, man. I don't know how we did it. Is it showing the flex? Yeah. Alright, so it's bouncy, bouncy, bouncy. Squeeze. See squeeze? See squeeze? Squeeze. Please. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Garbage. Flex. It's kind of hard to see. Go and try again, but yeah, it's. I think it's quite impossible. No, then you can try. I, I tried it before. I I, I can't. I I'll probably break my fingers. But uh, he has a lot of people. When I was reading through his comments, a lot of people were agreeing with him that the bike was. It's a shitty bike that you know he could flex so much. But I I, I don't know, man. I don't wanna don't wanna go against him. I I I actually follow this guy, but you can go and check him out. Uh, he has very good opinions about bikes oh, and cycling. I mean, the bike is definitely not as stiff as the F12, but I don't think it will flex to that extent. Lah. Yeah. Okay, thanks Aaron for coming out. This has been an awesome session. I, I feel a bit weird being in front of the camera, but if you guys want to be on my channel and you don't want to show your face, I can do it for you. I'll be in front of the camera. I'll take the hit and DM me on Instagram if you want to feature your bike. Uh, I'll see you guys next week. Thank you so much, Aaron.